Well, 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 it's been almost a year since I did my Sonic Origins review, and just to give you guys the recap, I thought the collection was fine, though litter was issues. The addition of four mainline classic Sonic games reworked with the retro engine was nice, especially the fact that 3 and Knuckles was there. And I thought Mission Mode was a great addition, though aside from that, it was very lacking in features. I found it crazy that Sonic CD seemed to be the most feature-packed of the collection, even though that game was still missing Knuckles, so it still felt incomplete. And the fact that every other game had no stage select mode, no time attack mode, was definitely infuriating, especially the fact that some of these games you have to go through the secret menus just to have access to that. And of course there was all the issues in terms of bugs and glitches that the original Origins release had. From Tails being stuck off screen, the collision issue, the most annoying to me, and just all the other smaller stuff. So it definitely did have issues and I definitely stopped playing after I did my review on Origins. So fast forward a year later and we got the announcement, much like Sonic Mania, Sonic Origins was going to get a plus release which promises to add in brand new content to the game and address some issues the OG release had. All for a $4 asking price for new buyers and a $10 upgrade for early adopters, including those that spent $45 on the digital deluxe version. You can obviously tell I am not happy with that. So does this make Origins the definitive way of playing classic games, or does it still lack? And unfortunately, it still lacks. Let's first talk about the new additions. Knuckles was of course added into Sonic CD, and he basically just plays like Knuckles. It's basically Knuckles in Sonic CD, and I don't know why it took this long to finally get him into Sonic CD when he should have been there in the vanilla release. You promoted the fact that you play as Sonic Tails and Knuckles, and you don't include them in there. So of course, I'm not going to give them a pass to have to spend an extra $10 just to play as Knuckles in Sonic CD. And on top of that, there's also new courses that Knuckles can go through, and I don't even know if this is worthwhile of a brand new feature to promote, and why you have to lock Knuckles behind a $10 asking price. But of course, the more bigger addition in terms of characters is Amy, and she's basically a worse playing Sonic. Not to a crazy amount, she's not as bad as Sonic Advance in my opinion, but definitely something's missing here. She has the same speed as Sonic, she can still spin that, of course, and she has her unique abilities like the hammer spin when jumping midair. It's much like the Insta Seal was a much bigger hitbox, and it has major chaining potential. I mean, look at this right here when I'm going against Eggman in Spring Yard Zone. And look at these other bosses here, just make easy work on them. It's amazing to how Amy can destroy bosses with her hammer spin. Though another ability that's less useful is her kind of drop dash attack where she does the drop dash ability but instead of doing the drop dash, she does this hammer attack where she constantly attacks with her hammer. I found it to be barely useful because you don't get that pepped up speed that you normally get with the drop dash and she still runs at the same speed. So I don't really find an incentive to use that ability as much in comparison to the hammer spin. And of course, much like our other characters, Amy can go both super and hyper in the respective games. Super is what you expect, faster speed and invincibility, though unlike Sonic, she just has a glow like Tails and Knuckles, which is a little disappointing to me. And her hyper ability is that she can throw hammers, Castlevania style. It's kind of useless when you have the hammer spin attack, but I wish there was more to Amy's hyper abilities, because of course with Sonic, you have the screen you attack, Tails had the flicky army of death, and Knuckles could glide through anything and cause an earthquake while Amy just has a hammer throw from Castlevania that's less useful than her regular attacks. So yeah, very disappointed when it comes down to Amy. And the other big feature, of course, is the addition of the Game Gear games. All 12 Game Gear games are available here, but if you know already, Sega had versions of these games available on Sega Master System, which those versions are not here, so essentially meaning you're going to deal with some screen crunch when it comes down to some of these Sega Game Gear games. And they could have given us the option of have both the Master System version and the Game Gear version, just saying. But aside from that, there's also an echo effect on there. I barely noticed it, but I know for most people it's definitely a distraction. Maybe it's because the setup I have in terms of sound for my computer that I can hear the echo effect. I don't know. But aside from that, I didn't notice any kind of input lag or anything like that, so hey, at least the emulation works fine. But then again, this is gamer games we're talking about here. But still, quite honestly, the main problem I have with these gamer games is that they're not some grand addition that you can tell about of having these 12 gamer games when they're basically just small little appetizers. I don't know, you could have included games like 3D Blast, Spinball, or Hell Knuckles Keogs into this collection here. 
that probably would have made it more worthwhile. Sure, probably it's not running on the retro engine, but at least that's more than just Game Gear games. And finally, in terms of new additions, there's this surprise thing. It's basically just these small challenges, seeing how no new achievements were added into Origins Plus, which is basically just piss easy thing to just play as Amy in Sonic 1. The only real hard thing was just finding a statue in Wacky Workbench. That was basically it right there. And once you beat the surprise, you get a picture, 100 coins, and tutorials of how to get to the cheat menus in Sonic 1, 2, 3, and Knuckles and CD. Almost like Sega knew that they couldn't add in a stage select or a time attack mode and just tack the tutorials in because we couldn't even get simple features into this collection. And yeah, I'm complaining about this because we're spending $10 right here and they couldn't even add in simple features into this game that were missing from the past release. And Sonic Mania Plus added more shit into their release compared to Origins Plus. So that's embarrassing right there that I have to spend double the price of Mania Plus because this definitely doesn't feel like $10 to me. But we're not done yet because one of the main promises was to fix all the bugs and glitches that exist in the previous release. Keep in mind, there was already an update that came out for Sonic Origins in July of last year that addressed some of the bugs in the vanilla release, like Tails being stuck off screen. So of course, I'm not gonna give brownie points for bugs already fixed. And let me tell you, they barely fix shit. Yeah, I'm not kidding when I say that. Any of the bugs that I saw in Sonic Origins are still here. The conveyor belts popping it in Metropolis Zone are still there. The collision issues, even though they're somewhat mitigated, they're still here. There's still times where I get crushed by stuff that I did not expect to get crushed. Still bull when I deal with that. And also people brought up the whole electric shield touching water. I experienced that as well. So what a surprise. I also experienced some things that everyone else also experienced. How fun. And there's also new glitches, how about that? I mean, look at me at Starlight Zone where I'm being pushed through the other side when I'm supposed to go through the other way. And here in Metallic Madness, Knuckles is just phasing through that crusher right there. And in Starlight Speedway, I thought I got soft luck right here, and but thankfully the game was merciful to let me through. And hell, there's more glitches that people are experiencing in this release, so in my opinion, they've just added in more bugs to this release right here. What the hell happened here? They had a full year to fix all these bugs here, and I don't care about the amount of people that worked on this or the budget they had. They had a full year here. All this should have been fixed here, and we're spending $10 on this on top of that, so I'm definitely not happy. Still, not too surprising that I don't recommend Sonic Origins Plus to anyone who previously owned Sonic Origins. It's not worth the $10, it barely adds much content, and bugs are still here. Regarding bugs, it's false advertising that they claim that they're fixing bugs when bugs are still here from the previous release. And I was hoping when I did this review, I was not going to come in and trash this game. I was hoping to say, yeah, this is a worthwhile release, it's worth $10, go on and enjoy Origins Plus. But no, we're dealing with this stuff right here, and I have to say what I have to say. The game is still not fixed. And the more disappointing thing to me is that Sonic Forever had a brand new update that included Amy Rose, and she plays better in that game than this game right here. And for anyone who's new to Sonic Origins and hasn't played the original release, then maybe pick up Sonic Origins Plus for 40 bucks. You get a decent amount of content, but still you still deal with some bugs here and there. But for everyone else who bought it before, save your money. And if you want to see more videos, I also do Dragon Quest and Mario videos, you should check out these videos here. I think you'll get a good kick out of those. See you guys on the next one. Take care.